Alrighty then. Here's a hunk of rock sitting on my prep bench. I'm going to work on today. Uh, it's full of clams and echinoids. Uh, it's from the Rio Del Formation in Northern California. Uh, you can see these clams here. Very common clam there. Uh, what the heck are they? Mechianums. Clinocardium mechianums. And you can see this sand dollar here encrusted with sand and stuff, the sandstone. There's another one upside down. Uh, another one upside down, or piece of one. And you can see edges of echinoids. It's a really cool rock. It's about two million years old. You can see all these, well that's probably a clam, but you can see where this rock broke. There's tons of echinoids in it. All different sizes. And this side is the good side, what I consider the good side. Uh, little tiny clams. Uh, I can't remember the name of these little tiny clams. You can see that little hole there that was drilled in by a, a meat-eating snail, gastropod. Uh, with, so he was murdered. And you can see an upside-down echinoid here. One here that's not upside-down. And one here that's uh, dorsal side up. I'm going to clean this one up only and wash up the whole rock because it's, it's absolutely filthy, dusty, dirty. Uh, I'm going to polish this one and leave it just the way it is. Uh, should look pretty cool. And what I'm going to use, excuse me, Ann, what I'm going to use is this sanding barrel. It's 120 grit. Um, you got to be extremely careful, careful on top of these tests because they're extremely thin there. And uh, then I'm going to go on to this 200 grit. And then I'll polish it up. Anyways, show you how that's Always wear your dust mask. And then very carefully, boy, it's been a lot of years since I've done this. I, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these, but that was a long, long time ago. Well, this is going to be easy. Anyways, I'm going to do that to this whole thing. Then change to this sanding barrel. Do it again. Clean it up nice and neat. And I'll show you when I'm done. There's that. Still doesn't look very good, but you'll see. Um, if you can see, let me zoom in here so you can see this. This little hole right there, that's its poop chute. This is uh, Scutalaster Major, they're extinct sand dollars. They look exactly like the Dendrasters, except the modern day Dendraster, Eccentricus. Uh, the poop chute is actually on the bottom of the test. So now I'm going to do a little hand sanding on this baby. Now that I've got a little tiny piece of wet dry sandpaper, this is 360 grit. And even a smaller piece, this is 600 grit. So what I'm going to do is fold these up into thirds. That way they hold it holds itself together. Easier to use. And I've got some water. And all I do is sand. I've had some of these lots of these actually in such hard rock you have to grind down with the or first of all I go down to the where I think it's at with my air scribe 
and then I start grinding with the aluminum oxide wheels and you can't see the difference in color so you gotta constantly stop wet the rock when you hit sand dollar you can actually see the difference as plain as day when it's wet if it's not wet you can't see it at all and I used to sell back when in my fossil dealing days I used to sell a ton of these god I sold a lot of these totes, totefuls and now try finding them. Everybody found out where that spot was. And within a couple of years it was pretty much picked clean. Anyways, you can see how that's beginning to look kind of nice. When you think you've sanded it good enough, sand it some more. That's what I learned polishing these things, or getting them to polish. But look at that beautiful little flower. Absolutely gorgeous. And this isn't even a good one. Well, it's kind of good. But there was, a, there was a handful, a dozen or two, out of the hundreds that I did that were actually exceptional. Okay, I'm going to get to the 600 and I'll be back. Giving this thing an absolute scrub. Lots of dirt, lots of sand coming off of it. Some of the sandstone is rather soft. Some of it's rather hard. But... It's never been cleaned, so I figured I better clean it. It's going to take a while to dry. And then I'll get back to attacking that little tiny sand dollar and making it look real pretty. Well, I'm glad I washed that when I did. Ran into a, a problem. Um, when that was wet, you could see it even more so. There was a crack right there. Actually, let me zoom in. If you can look carefully, there's a crack right there. So tomorrow when this is dry, I'm going to fill that, load it up with some thin set uh, super glue, some cyanoacrylate, and then let that cure for 24 hours. And then I'll sand the sand dollar off again and get whatever glue off the surface just so it's all only in that crack. And being that's such a superior glue, that'll keep that from breaking off. So, that's all I can do today. Alrighty then, phase about ready to be done. I've already sanded this and then let it dry. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see where the glue came through and soaked down into the uh, the sandstone, which is good. It'll help hold that piece together. Shouldn't fall apart. Just don't let the kids handle it. Okay, I've got a buffing wheel. It's a very firm buffing wheel. Uh, you can tell that it's got, it's been quite used. And what I do is I take a rock, like so, hit the edge of that rock, and that pretty much cleans up my buffing wheel. I've been using stainless steel buffing rouge, uh, buffing compound, well, forever. Uh, it's uh, the green stuff leaves green and so white looks better than green so I've been using it ever since. Anyways, apply some on your, your wheel and then 
start polishing. It doesn't take long. And there it is. One beautiful, let's zoom in on that baby. Get a close up look. I think you can see that. So one that's been man-made man polished on an all natural rock. I think that is pretty dang cool. Whoop, jeez. How cool is that? I think I said this was from Scotia Sandstone. No, this is from Rio Del Formation. Uh, about two million years old, give or take. So young as fossils go, but pretty old when you consider you only live to be about 80 or 90 years old. So, there you have it. That's actually a Christmas present for a certain person. And it will be out of the garage.